Okay. 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 Good afternoon again. <laughs> it's my pleasure to see you uh, here today. Uh, I'm going to present our research paper uh, about semantic alignment. And one of our co-author, uh, Yulia Alexeyevna Tumenova, is here and uh, will help me to answer the questions. And I'm going to present uh, the main results. So, um, uh, everyone in this room uh, met uh, uh, with the uh, word problems during their schooling. So everyone knows what does it, what it is, word problems. We have to, in word problems, we have to deal with real life objects and uh, then map to the them to uh, mathematical representation. So we somehow have to construct a math situation. How we can do it? Um, it's important to remember that mathematical word problem represents real world relations between objects. So, uh, and uh, for example, if we have a situation with three roses and two roses and three tulips, it's easy for us to add these objects. And for example, if uh, we have another word problem uh, where we uh, have to deal with uh, vases and tulips, it's easy to us to uh, solve problems on division, math problems on division. And in previous research, uh, the um, authors um, named some heuristics that help us to relate situation models to mathematical models, and people often use it. Um, so again, what is a, a semantic alignment? It's a process of analogical mapping between uh, semantic relation implied by objects, uh, I mean, uh, between uh, roses, tulips, vases, and so on, uh, and uh, the problem situation uh, and the potential mathematical relation. Uh, there are two kinds of uh, semantic alignment. First of all, this is alignment f with arithmetic relations. Uh, relations between objects could be uh, two kinds of relations between objects. First of all, this is a functional relationship. So, uh, for example, tulips and vases evokes the functional relation contain because usually uh, vases contain tulips, uh, and this uh, relation is asymmetrical. And uh, the functional relation aligns structurally with uh, mathematically symmetrical relation divide. So if we see uh, the uh, objects that held uh, functional relationship, we usually uh, uh, solve uh, the problem on division. And uh, on the other hand, uh, objects can relate, uh, can have another kind of relationship between uh, between them, uh, and another kind is symmetrical relationships. For example, tulips and roses share the their superset relation, both flowers. Or another example, um, dogs and cats uh, share the their superset relation, both pet. And uh, these objects play symmetric roles in the both flower or both pet relations. And this kind of relation between objects aligns structurally with the mathematically symmetrical relation addition. So uh, in the math problems on addition, we usually have to deal with uh, objects that have symmetric relationships. Uh, as for another, uh, not, not for another, but we have uh, another heuristic, and this is semantic alignment with rational numbers. It was shown that uh, discreteness uh, and continuity of entities that we have in our word problems, uh, these uh, characteristics of entities affect the way people represent peop uh, problem structure. For example, such discrete entities as marbles, uh, balloons, pens, and so on, people prefer to represent with fractions. Обыкновенные uh, дроби. And continuous entities such as Salary, waters are usually represented with decimals, десятичные дроби. And uh, in uh, several studies, uh, there was uh, some findings that uh, uh, provide us with evidence. 
uh, that pattern, uh, for example, uh, on the sample of the US students, it was shown that pattern of alignment for arithmetic operations is systematically preferable among these students, for, st I mean, uh, for college students. And um, um, moreover, th for many people, the process of semantic alignment is highly automatic. And um, that means that uh, these processes that include semantically alignment uh, operations, uh, they are processed more quickly. Um, and uh, for another type of semantic alignment with rational numbers, it was also shown that pattern of alignment uh, is systematically preferred among American college students and textbooks writers, and even uh, this pattern is also uh, preferable for Korean college students. So, what have uh, we found? We found, I mean, our colleagues found, that uh, there are some kind of semantic alignment. It's uh, very, uh, it's preferable among college students, and we've seen this, we, we have this evidence for American and Korean students. But we uh, have a question. Do people prefer semantic alignment? Uh, and this, this pre pre preference, uh, this preference reflect a basic understanding of mathematical representation, or this semantic alignment, the presence of this semantic alignment reflect a history of specific learning experience? In order to answer this question, we have to uh, we have to um, research this question from cross-national perspective. Uh, I mean, uh, there's some problem be uh, with... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I said that uh, there was some evidence from Korean college students, but their uh, results can be considered as cross-national perspective because uh, the US and Korean students, they have similar math curriculum in their schools. But in our country, in Russia, we have um, some distinguishing characteristic of our math curriculum. And uh, I would like to focus on two characteristics. Uh, first of all, it's abstraction and measurement. For the last thing, <laughs> measurement, uh, I mean, uh, we have a very strong focus on magnitude in measurement and in elementary school and secondary school and so on. Uh, for example, students uh, in elementary school, school usually met with uh, some kilometers, uh, uh, weights, I mean, with some measures. They have to measure something. They have to use other objects to measure the magnitude of other objects and so on. Uh, uh, also, fractions and decimals um, uh, are introduced simultaneously in the uh, Russian schools. Uh, in, contrast to, in contrast to the U.S. curriculum. Um, as for abstraction, it's very important uh, that Russian children are taught the beginning of algebra in the uh, elementary school. I mean, in th it's really just the beginning of algebra, but uh, we have to deal with some unknown elements uh, in even, is even if in elementary school teachers uh, often ask students to make schema of the relationship between objects, to um, find some unknown elements, and so on. However, all of these things, uh, all of these things, uh, of course, are uh, introduced in other math curriculums in the world. Uh, this fo uh, the focus on these things in uh, Russian curriculum is very distinguishing. <coughs> so, what we have done, in order to answer our question. We have we wanted to know what happened. We want to know what happened in Russia with semantic alignment. And uh, considering this question with cross no from cross-national perspective allowed us to answer the question, what is the nature of semantic alignment? I mean, not the nature, but uh, what is it? And uh, in our research, we addressed both arithmetic relation and rational numbers. We tried to, um, we not try, we, we did textbook analysis for both, both cases and we did three experiments with college students, with college students again and for, uh, with the eighth graders in school. So for first for arithmetic relation, the textbook. Uh, we analyzed two textbooks for grades four and five uh, these textbooks are very popular. They share 
think a, ve a very uh, big share of market in Russia. Uh, we analyzed, uh, so, so the question was whether the pattern of semantic alignment for Russian textbooks would hold as for US textbooks. So first of all, what's happening, what's happening with arithmetic relation in uh, textbooks and uh, what is, okay, um, i tell you about, i tell you about la later. So in total, we analyzed uh, 700 40 problems. We classified them as addition, subtraction, or division multiplication problems. And what we found? We found that if problem um, involved symmetric relations between objects, these problems usually was on uh, included addition or subtraction. Uh, and from another point of view, uh, no, on the other hand, the majority of problems that uh, included asymmetric relationship between problems uh, include uh, these problems was on a division. So what was the conclusion? Uh, the findings uh, in Russia replicated the pattern of results observed in American textbooks. So it means that in uh, Russian uh, textbooks, um, math problems for arithmetic relations are aligned with the semantic structure, uh, with semantic structure. So, uh, as for students, so we studied textbooks, but what happened, to, uh, what, what was the real people? We decided to, uh, in order to answer the question whether integrated, I mean, whether students in Russia, like those in US, also hold this pattern of alignment or not, we decided to, uh, studied students right after they, they finished the school, so they uh, are not exposed to uh, math curriculum at all for several years. And um, so uh, we studied 77 uh, undergraduate students from HSC. Uh, participants were randomly assigned to receive some booklets on addition or division, uh, and we asked them to construct word problems. Uh, with uh, three types of object pairs, we provide them. Uh, students were asked to create um, problems on, on addition or division. What have we found? We found that if um, we asked students cr to create math problems with objects that uh, have symmetric relationship, uh, I'm so yeah, uh, with symmetric relationship, it was easy to them to construct a uh, problem on adi with addition. You see this black, uh, black thing. Uh, but if we ask them to construct word problem on addition with asymmetric uh, relationship, it was harder to them. They tried to escape the situation and tried to, to do something else. As for division, the situation was, um, was uh, the same. If we ask them, students, to uh, make, uh, to construct a word problem with uh, asymmetric relationship, is it was easy th to them uh, to construct, <coughs> well, with asymmetric, it was easy to them to do it, b because uh, this is a how alignment worked. So they have, for example, tulips and vases, uh, and it was easy to them to construct a problem on division rather than on addition. So again, Russian college students showed semantic alignment for arithmetic operation as uh, US students. Uh, these results are closely matched. This is all for arithmetic relations. Oh, well, I'm sorry. And next we go to uh, semantic alignment with rational numbers. First of all, we again did textbook analysis. Uh, the procedure was the same. We took uh, three textbooks uh, for another grades. Uh, but these uh, textbooks are also very popular. popular. Uh, we classified um, word problems uh, uh, as problems that include decimals or fractions. Uh, and then we classified objects in these um, word problems as uh, continuous or uh, discrete entities. It was shown, uh, first of all, very interesting that most uh, problems that we, sh we found in our textbooks, they con included continuous entities. I mean, uh, salaries, waters, uh, fields, uh, uh, and, and so on. And um, 
and it was shown that um, no matter uh, what kind of entities, uh, no, no, not matter, I mean, uh, for continuous entities, uh, there is no preference of uh, rational numbers. Um, people, I know, what problems included uh, decimals and fractions, both for <coughs> I'm sorry. So it doesn't matter um, what kind of entities was included in uh, what problems, and uh, Russian textbooks uh, included uh, mm, I'm sorry. It, it, uh, so uh, it Russian uh, this word problems wasn't aligned. This uh, situation is very different from the situation in the US. So our rational our word problems with rational numbers are not aligned as I it uh, was supposed to be. Okay, uh, what do we have with real people? Uh, thank you. Uh, we asked eight graders to uh, construct uh, word problems with uh, two word problems with uh, fractions and uh, with decimals. We are, uh, yes. First, uh, first we uh, showed them some examples and then we asked them to construct problems. And what uh, have we seen? We seen that um, eight graders, people who are taught with this textbook that we analyzed previously, uh, use uh, decimals for continuous, uh, so there is no difference between uh, number type and continuity of entity that uh, they show that, that they have in in the word problem. So again, uh, there is no semantic element for eighth graders. And it is these results are consistent with textbooks analysis results, and these results are very different from what we have seen in uh, the U.S. And finally, the last experiment, uh, we did the last experiment with college students because we want to know what happened, what uh, what happened after students uh, finished the school, and did no uh, did not, and is not exposed to the textbooks no more for for many years. So uh, we took 62 students and asked them again to construct uh, word problems with fractions and decimals. And it was, sh uh, and it was uh, shown that uh, people who are not mm, exposed to these textbooks with no alignment um, on for, for rational numbers, they show alignment. They showed us that they prefer to use continuous entities with uh, I even show you. They prefer to use decimals, continued, or I mean, continu continuous entities f with decimals, fractions, um, decimals, and uh, countable uh, entities with uh, fractions. So this result showed us some alignment. Uh, and Russian college students, unlike Russian math textbooks and eighth graders, tend to use decimals to represent continuous entities and fractions to represent discrete entities. Um, finally, there are conclusions. What we wanted to do, we wanted to uh, understand what is uh, what happened with semantic alignment, with uh, arithmetic relation and rational numbers in Russia from cross-national cross, uh, perspective. And uh, we found that uh, both for Russian educators and Russian students, uh, we prefer to use uh, they, <laughs> and we we. Uh, prefer to use ar aligned arithmetic problems. So this seems to be a basic understanding of um, mapping between um, a real life situation and uh, math uh, pr uh, problem. But as for rational numbers, we have a different situation. We, uh, seen that we have seen that uh, Russian textbooks demonstrate the b that both fractions and decimals can be used as tool for continuous entities. That I mean, for example, that both fractions and decimals can be used as tool for uh, measurement of water and um, uh, water or salary or field and so on. 
and the eighth graders showed the same pattern. But after the people, uh, after the students finished their schools, um, they showed alignment that was supposed to show. And it, what does it mean? It means that uh, if arithmetic, uh, while arithmetic relations could be considered as uh, basic uh, heuristic, basic understanding of the relationship between uh, real-life objects and uh, math structure, math problem structure. But rational, uh, but semantic alignment for Russian numbers, or rational numbers, I'm sorry, um, reflect the history of specific education. Uh, uh, namely, the history of specific education uh, we've shown for math curriculum. So that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Questions? To ask him. Uh, you can ask any question. Uh. I can. Uh, I have a hypothesis that it's not. It's not very uh, clear presentation, and I have very m m many examples. So, if you want, we can discuss examples of the semantic element for arithmetic and rational numbers. So if you want, we can show them. Thank you. I think it's a wonderful example of a comparative study that really is challenging the existing knowledge and is finding a new context that can challenge the, the findings from another context. That was really nice to hear the presentation. Um, I was wondering about the, I think it was the last graph you had about this, um, how the students, college students were responding. And I was wondering, uh, because both of them have fair amount of the minimum mm -hmm. or, or the smaller as aspect as well. So did you see, it, did this become an individual difference? So some students tended to give fractions in continuous and other individuals tended to answer all these questions in Countable, or was it that certain tasks mm -hmm. were attracting students to respond either in continuous or countable? Did you see anything relation like that in these results as well? <coughs> as a, thank you for your question. If I understand it right, uh, if you understand your question right, the question is about uh, is the difference for individual difference or it, no? The results are for average students, so. Maybe there are some students that show alignment or did not show alignment, but in average, the difference uh, between uh, number type and continuity is significant. So right. for, for, for average students, this is tendency. Right. Uh, maybe I should check. Did you have more than one task to measure each type or just one task measuring? Only one task. OK, right? then, you don't no. then you couldn't have yeah, the task. Um, Возможно, неправильно понял вопрос. In the experiments, we had several tasks in our mm -hmm. booklets, so it uh, it is a really average assessment of right. uh, how they how they tend to mm -hmm. behave. So I think that would be an interesting thing to check whether it's that certain tasks. With although they are like all the continue, all the fraction content, and you have these three basic tasks, but it could be some formulation of the task is kind of temp tempting students to rather is respond in conti uh, with fractions or decimals, or certain numbers are more attractive to use in fractions that rather than decimals. Or it could be that some individuals, mm -hmm. they kind of develop their own response pattern that is more like, it could be that some individuals are consistently using fractions for countables, and other individuals are continuously using frac um, continuous for fra fractions. Sorry, uh, decimals for countables. So that's something that could be either an individual difference, or it could be that the task characteristics are tempting, or it could be that it's not dependent on either of these, but it would be an interesting additional thing to check. Mm -hmm. And I think to relate to that, you might also want to see, because there is a clear difference from grade eight to college, that is there something in between in the curriculum mm -hmm. that is influencing this semantic alignment? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So there are basically two questions, right? <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, I think yes, it's a very important question about whether uh, the source of this difference is uh, the task specific, right? Yes, but unfortunately we uh, didn't try to use another type of task. We only used uh, we only suggest uh, uh, both students in eighth grade and college students to construct their own problems. So we didn't try to use another stimuli. Uh, but uh, and, and yes, maybe maybe there are some problem. But as I remember, papers of our colleagues that uh, I mean, basically we replicated their studies, experiments. Um, they tried to use several uh, several I mean tasks, right? And uh, results was the same. Results were the same. Yes. And for for the another question that um, uh, as I know, uh, so the another <laughs> question about what happened between eighth grade and uh, first grade, что происходит посерединке между восьмым классом первым первым курсом, может ли что-то быть, которое что связано? So I think that was basically a suggestion yeah, to do yeah. an analysis of uh, yeah. is there something in the curriculum that could be leading to the semantic alignment in that period? Yeah, so basically we can just say that something happened there <laughs> and but we didn't analyze it. Yeah. Thank you. Я поняла, спасибо. Questions? I want to ask you. Uh, I'm a psychologist, and uh, uh, this research for me, uh, very interesting for me because it's uh, about thinking, uh, problem solving. Uh, you mentioned uh, mm, that, uh, if I write from, uh, understand the, uh, your report, um, that uh, for um, semantic alignment uh, responsible uh, of from the one side uh, concepts. Uh, uh, semantic representations for different types of uh, mathematical uh, concepts, and uh, from the other side, uh, uh, strategies, different strategies uh, or heuristics. Uh, did you make special distinction between concepts and uh, strategies, or it's not uh, relevant for your research? Uh, no? <coughs> Thank you for question. Is I understand? Because for psychologists, no, it's no, uh, very no. important uh, mm -hmm. in problem solving. We can um, uh, use different types of concepts, uh, uh, or we use different uh, uh, strategies. Uh, yeah, we are also psychologists, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it didn't help <laughs> to understand your question. Sorry. Uh -huh. uh, you are asking about uh, did the different meaning uh, mm -hmm. of would be different meaning to the terms of concept and yes. strategies. Yes, and in your research, what is the most important? Uh, is it about uh, uh, mass concepts or um, uh, strategies for problem solving? Uh, uh, did you make oh, this distinction yeah, yeah, yeah. or it's not yeah. relevant for your... Uh, I, I understand. You understand me? Okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, actually, we didn't uh, we didn't um, evaluate strategies mm -hmm. as a strategies mm -hmm. as a as a uh, series of different steps one after another and uh -huh. uh, making decision after each steps and so on. So we didn't re we didn't evaluate strategies itself mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. so so what we did is just uh, to compare s um, convenient and in, uh, uh, inconvenient operations mm -hmm. for people who is exposed to mass mm -hmm. curriculum and who are not exposed anymore mm -hmm. to our mass curriculum. Okay. So it's uh, difficult to think about what was the strategies, what was the concepts, concepts uh -huh. in these operations. Okay. So maybe you have examples where it would be important to distinguish between them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. I think it's about strategies and uh, yes. Then it's mm -hmm. because it's about using language. 
Any questions? If there's no one else, I could ask a related question. Uh, if you did actually do the coding and you know what kind of tasks the students mm -hmm. pr produced, mm -hmm. because it's one of the things that students and, and school mathematics word problems are so-called pseudo-real problems. Mm -hmm. They are not mm -hmm. realistic. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in these Russian students, when they were asked to make a problem task, did they provide realistic problems that make sense or were they so-called pseudo-realistic that nobody would really actually solve it using the mathematics but would use different strategies? So were they in, in a, did you think they were good word problems in the sense that they were realistic? I can answer for part of your question. <coughs> I coded these uh, word problems, and um, most of them was okay problems. They were realistic. We can handle with them. They were solvable. I mean, they can solve them. I, I will. I can solve them. Everybody can solve them. And uh, also, the wo there was a part of problems that looked for me like a joke. Like, I mean, put uh, these boys in the vases and it's ridiculous and we coded these problems as jokes and didn't consider them in the analysis but m most of the problems constru constructed problems was okay they were realistic pretty realistic right and we can show them okay. Uh, show okay okay so we, we don't have any questions so mm -hmm. No, textbook analysis. Ah, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Confused. Okay. Спасибо. <laughs> <laughs> So these problems on arithmetic operations from textbook analysis. So they are totally normal, totally okay in real life world problems. Maybe uh, some of them about cisterns of ton with tons of gasoline. Maybe this is not so real uh, for uh, third graders, but they are totally real. They are not joke. Um, this is from textbooks. Uh, this is uh, from textbooks uh, when we studied rational numbers. Uh, and uh, as I said before, we have uh, a lot of pro majority of problems was with uh, continuous entity type. And next, uh, the examples of problems generated with uh, different unite unit types. <laughs> they, 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 are, they were students. <laughs> Time for one question. Maybe. Once. I would like to comment that I really like the textbooks tasks because they seem to be like, I don't know if they are real, but they, they are very realistic and they seem to be like actually someone's working. The student tasks do have the same problems as you, so that nobody would really think about these problems in this way. Well, some of them have. So it's kind of, they, they force 
mathematics onto a situation where that doesn't really require very much mathematical thinking. But I really like the textbook examples in your textbooks. Great. It's very interesting because um, these uh, textbooks were very old. I mean, they changed a little from the Soviet times. Yes, and yeah. So there, there were a lot of problems with workers, the pieces of the work, and factories, and, and so on. There is a question. I think the questions are really, really interesting and original in uh, students' uh, ideas. I just want to know that um, if these word problems are also accompanied by diagrams or only uh, just the mm -hmm. words? Uh, in textbooks, these, these problems were not accompanied with anything, just, just word problems. Yeah. Books, uh, I mean, just uh, letters. <coughs> but uh, in case of experiment, there also wasn't any uh, uh, other stimuli uh, material except for letters. I mean, we just ask them to construct the word problems and provide them with objects, pairs, and that's all. Yeah. So no, no diagrams, no, no other things. Yeah. Uh, don't you think that in that case it would be a different um, input? Mm -hmm. uh, these word problems are also, especially in the lower grades, mm -hmm. uh, if these word problems are accompanied with um, uh, some kind of stimulators, as you put it, like diagrams or some kind of uh, additional element, mm -hmm. um, uh, what is your comment on that? So the question is about what happened if we provide our object pairs with uh, the schematic uh, schema b b yeah. diagrams, yeah? Mm -hmm. I can try to answer a bit because um, actually the question about uh, using additional materials like diagrams and so on, it's, no, it's not very easy because uh, the type of diagrams can also affect the type of answers, like a bars diagrams or plot diagrams. It's all different kind of modeling of uh, mathematical um, relationships and it also affect our thinking about. So we didn't use this, including because of uh, these possible difficulties with some kind of, and uh, basically because uh, what we um, actually needed to do is just to, uh, first of all, replicate the same design, experimental design, which was, uh, already done in the U.S. sample and the Korean sa samples. So that was important for us to keep the same design, design. of experiments. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Can I ask? Excuse me. I was on other uh, reports and uh, come uh, two minutes uh, ago. And I uh, want to ask the last uh, tasks. Is a correct task or does not correct? Because it's not possible to take 0 0.33 from 60 dogs. It will be uh, 19 uh, dogs and uh, more than half. What does it mean? Uh, <coughs> these problems wasn't from textbooks. These problems were constructed by college students. And we didn't uh, evaluate them from the possibility to I mean, to decide how many dogs, yeah, how many dogs have left, I mean, the exact numbers. But, uh, so, it, it wasn't the question of our research to, un to understand, is it solvable or not? 